This team is unstoppable yet again. Until Pep leaves, can we see any other team beating this team to the title? Clinical yet again, and their plays came up to show in the big moments. Can this team get any better next season? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Players Own YouTube channel and welcome to our Manchester City recap for season 23-24. And boy, once again, they got the job done. Man City just seemed to every single year give us a slimmer of hope that another team could win the title, but yet again take it away and win it come the final day. The fourth consecutive Premier League title, first time it's done in history, and Pep Guardiola and his side continue to to break records and set new standards for this league that teams cannot match. And, you know, Arsenal were probably a 9.8 out of 10 this season and yet still can get the title because Man City just find a way at important moments to win key games and get over the line. I feel like once again this season, start a little bit slow. The likes of Erling Haaland, Kevin De Bruyne are dealing with injuries and inavailability and slightly poor performances, but Phil Foden steps up. And you lose Ilkay Gundogan, but it up steps Josko Vardio out of all players to come clutch come the end of the season with important goals. Rodri still yet to lose games of football. Bernardo Silva continues to show us why he's so talented. And Jeremy Doku, who was a bit of a different signing yeah, throughout the season, showed he was worth his value in terms of the output he was able to give this side. So, you know, it's... Continues to be the massive puzzle. How do you beat this team, especially with how good they are at home? They don't lose games at home. And it looks like right now, Real Madrid on penalties is the only way you can go past Man City at this current point in time. Let's look back at their season. Their season record, 28 wins, 7 draws, only their 3 losses. Ending on 91 points was probably one of their lowest point tallies in a while, which gives them the top place and the Premier League title. And once again, 2 points clear over Arsenal. Coming to their best signing now, I think it has to be Josko Valiol, um, the £77.6 million signing from RB Leipzig. A great World Cup um, most recently, and has continued that for Man City. A bit of a shakier start in terms of being in and out with the whole pep roulette. I think his performances were quite good when he was playing, um, but couldn't really find a consistent spot. And then to sort of come after match week nine onwards, he was a lock at left back for this team. So impressive. And I guess it's nothing new that we're sort of used to that now. Man City playing centre halves out of position, but his ability to be so quick and deny the best wingers in the world that we have in the Premier League to go past him is fantastic. The body shape he means he outbodies a lot of players, so comfortable on the ball. And as the season went on, he saw and so he got further and further forward and being more progressive and getting shots on goal. And you see that five goals in his last nine games in all competitions, such a dangerous threat. And you saw that Fulham game, you know, got the first goal for them, calmed the nerve for City. Um, that's the effect he has. He was literally filling in the Ilkay Gundogan role. So a fantastic season for him. Continued to grow as the season went on. And you look at another centre-back now, that's fantastic for them. Nathan Ake, John Stones, Josko Gavardi, all, all these players can play centre-back, wing-back, in midfield. It's just, I can't fathom how they continue to find these players and don't spend, don't break the bank of them either. £77.6 million pounds is a lot of money. But considering Harry Maguire went for a similar value, Virgil van Dijk went for a similar value as well. And you're seeing players like um, like the Chelsea spending sort of 50, 60 million on players that are unproven yet. Goes to show how smart Man City's business has been. So he definitely goes down for me as the best signing of last season. The worst signing, again, a little bit harsh. There's not many bad signings at Man City, but probably Matas Nunes, a 53 million pound signing across from Wolves. Only the nine Premier League starts. Didn't make the 31 appearances um, in all competitions and only had the five assists. So... Decent numbers, but again, I thought he'd better break in a little bit more, and especially considering De Bruyne is in availability, some poor performances, some other midfielders in the team. Uh, Roger had a little suspension break there. You'd think he'd try and establish himself as a consistent player that off the bench or starting, I thought he would be as well, but it ended up being Mateo Kovacic, um, or at times just them just playing all the attackers in midfield with Bernardo Silva, Foden, uh, and De Bruyne also playing centrally. So didn't quite stamp his authority in his team, um, we've seen what happened with Calvin Phillips as well. You can slowly fade out of um, luck. He's obviously getting heaps more performances and um, appearances than Calvin Phillips got, but you've got to be very careful at Man City. If you start to underperform and don't get the appearances, you start to get faded out and you've get forgotten about. And I think he's such a talented player, Matthias Nunes. I just want to see him feature more from the start uh, and make more impact in games. But again, being very harsh and very nitpicking considering how good City's transfer strategy has been. £53 million, a pretty steep uh, transfer value. Hopefully he can come next season and show us what he's all about. Uh, in terms of the moment of the season, I've got to go with De Bruyne coming off the bench at Newcastle and changing the game. Oscar Bob obviously with the late winner, but De Bruyne's ability to come on the pitch after a long 
um, stint away with injury, um, comes on the pitch and just changes the game. That assist to Oscar Bob coming at the back post, fantastic. Um, only had a few touches, but impacted the game so well, contributes to winning so well. And if anything sums up Kevin De Bruyne, it was that game there. Yes, he might have been away for it, but you think he'd be a bit rusty, but this guy's quality is just too much. There's a reason why he might be regarded as the best number 10 in history because his passing array, his smarts on the ball, the time he has on the ball to pick the pass was fantastic. And you know, some players won't even make that pass in their whole careers, let alone coming off an injury like Kevin De Bruyne had. So just a fantastic moment. We've got a massive three points for City away at Newcastle in a key point of the season where that midpoint, if you drop a few points, you start to make that gap a bit bigger to Liverpool and Arsenal. And maybe they wouldn't have come back to be where they are sitting today with another Premier League title. So such an important moment. Um, and what a player Kevin De Bruyne is. It just showed his quality through and through. Um, coming to the breakout slash the most improved for City, and once again, it's Josko Vardiol. Um, as the five goals in his last nine games, he had the 10 clean sheets this season. He's in the top 1% for passing stats amongst the fullbacks. He's just fantastic on the ball. As I said, solid as well defensively. He doesn't get um, dribble pass despite being a centre-back. Naturally, his strength helps in one-on-ones as well. And I just think you've got the full package. There's not much else you can say about Josko Vardiol. As the season went on, we started to see less and less holes in his games. He built his confidence. Uh, and when you're alongside you know, some of the best centre-backs in the world, like Nathan Ake, Ruben Diaz, um, another fullback on the other side, like Carl Walker, you're obviously going to learn a lot and you're going to be having a lot of confidence to play your style of football. And he just showed that. I don't think come season's end, I couldn't see uh, any real fault he had in the last sort of three or four months. He was almost faultless in that sort of period. Um, was so key to see his turnaround um, feel one of those clutch roles in the side. And being a first-year you know, player in a team like this, it can be daunting, but he lived up to expectations. He exceeded uh, expectations and was one of those leaders in the side, probably was the best defender they had uh, across that, like, the last three months there. So was fantastic. Continued to show um, that he was improving in his game, becoming more versatile, becoming more skilled on the ball, just the pep effect realistically. And that's why he, for me, is the most improved player this season for Manchester City. Coming to the player of the season now, Pretty easy. One player of the year for a reason. It's Phil Foden. 19 goals, 8 assists, the 27 goal contributions, Premier League player of the season, and most importantly, clutch time moment. You saw on the final day, a wicked goal in the first two minutes. Um, changed the game versus Manchester United in that derby at home as well with another fantastic effort on his left foot. I remember away at Brentford, he tore that game apart when Brentford were taking them to just consistently throughout the year, especially with De Bruyne and Haaland not being at tip-top best for probably seven of the nine months of the year. He was the one leading the side. He was the key player, scoring key goals, making things happen. And he's just a superstar. We've seen this for a long period of time. He's been a superstar, but he took it to the next level this season and was showing those magical moments, which only the top you know, 1% of players can do. And that goal versus West Ham, not many people can jink inside and twat it off their left foot into the top corner with the swaz he had on that ball there. It was just fantastic to see all season, how he lifted to the occasion, he became the number one guy for most of the year. And now we're deferring to him to try and win games of football or lead them through. So I think just his ability to take on that mantle of, yes, I'm going to be that senior player now on this side and, and make things happen, create things myself, create things from others, is another level he stepped up now. And now it's sort of certified himself as that sort of top 10 Premier League players after this season. Just fantastically um, showed consistently what he can do um, and establish himself there amongst some of the big boys. I don't think... Um, looking like what Bakaya Saka did last season, probably in that sort of level, um, what some of the best Premier League players ever have done. And I guess it can be overshadowed by what Cole Palmer did this season. But in such a big side with so many great players and so much rotation, the fact he can go and score 19 goals, have eight assists in the Premier League, without Pep rotates the crew um, with a few, you know, um, poorer performances in Man City, just goes to show he consistently was impacting winning. And I think that's the be- biggest thing you can say. The best players impact winning in so many different ways and will find a way to consistently do it even when they're not performing at their best and that's what Phil Foden was all about this season so a massive tick in terms of the improvement book and now yeah as I said establish himself as a top 10 player in this league quite comfortably um, coming to the priorities for next season it's not really too much but I guess number one being keep Roger and De Bruyne as fit as possible you see when they're not there the difference it makes in the team so whatever you can do in the summer to try and keep them more valuable uh, more often we could be seeing them get 100 points next season with all that being said um, number two being challenged for Champions League I know you've got Real Madrid which is arguably the best team or the second best team in the world so you get unlucky there but you want to see them continue to challenge for Champions League football they've got a taste for um, the season prior you need to go back there and once again challenge either to a final or winning the trophy once again especially with how good this team is 
and especially with hints of Pep possibly leaving in two years' time as well. So we can see how that all works out. But you want to see this team with how good they are, actually challenging for the Champions League once again, potentially on a treble. That would sort of tick this team off in terms of the best legacy in Premier League history. That would surpass um, Sir Alex Ferguson, Man United teams. If we can go and win two trebles in the space of three or four years, that would just be fantastic for this side. Um, and then the third one is if you really have to add a few more um, add a few more pieces to midfield quality, some more younger players. Again, Matas Nunes could jump in and fulfil that. So Bernardo Silva, De Bruyne role as they start to age. But knowing Man City, they'll go and sign some more players. So it's about, you know, if anything, any reason you have to sign players in, probably midfield, it may be someone to replace Jack Grealish as he seems to be on the ad as well. But other than that, this team is basically perfect. There's not many holes to fill in at all. Uh, with that being said, their season grade, obviously an A+. Plus, fantastic in the Premier League, ruthless. Again, if De Bruyne plays every game, they probably don't drop any games. Three losses, not even the end of the world. Um, it's just the way they continue to keep fighting back from these stupid positions. And when you watch them play, you don't know how teams beat them because they're just so solid on the ball. And when they get chance, they put them away. Despite Haaland having a poor season, he goes and smacks away 20 Five plus goals. De Bruyne, despite being injured and a bit out of fitness, comes back into Newcastle, produces that performance. Josco Vardio hit the ground running. Ruben Diaz, John Stones have their best seasons, yet still they are so solid defensively. And you now got the problem of Edison. Um, do you keep him or do you sell him? Just because of what Ortega did as well. So it's just there's so many just um, almost billionaire type problems in Man City where they've got the luxury. They're so good that the smaller things we nitpicked, and that's just what Pep Guardiola is all about. As I said, yeah, A plus season. Not much else you can say. They won a three-team title race at the end of the season. So that's pretty impressive. And with all that being said, um, hope you enjoyed the video, guys. If you did, please smash a like on it. Subscribe to the Player's Own channel for more content like this and press that post notification bell so you know we upload our podcasts or videos on the channel. I hope you have a great rest of your day, ladies and gents. Um, enjoy the upcoming football. And I'll see you guys in another video very, very soon. Next time, guys. See you later.